So the goal with vibration machines, how do they work? HealthFactsReview.com, Alex here. How do these machines work? And so we know a little bit about the mechanisms. Actually, we know a lot. Uh, we've started studies a couple decades ago um, on these machines. They were well funded at the time. And so what we have found is that it's a unique type of health equipment, but the actual physiological effects on the body, uh, there is some similarities of what we know of how the body responds to other types of equipment out there. It's just that this is extremely, way more efficient. It's probably the ultimate conclusion you can make with these machines. Way more efficient, way to basically uh, induce some of the same mechanisms in the body that result in uh, health benefits, okay? So, um, for example, the muscle spindle cells in your body, muscular neuromuscular activation, okay, when you're doing exercise. In general, if let's say you did a squat or uh, a jumping jack or anything, lifted a weight, okay, the, the question is how much of that muscle gets utilized, right, when you're doing that particular um, exercise, uh, even at a heavy weight, and generally what we find in, in muscle spindle cells and other parts is that there is just really a very, usually a very small, efficient uh, activation, small percentage. Totally measurable, by the way, um, with even equipment that is several decades old. So plenty of studies out there. Just so we're talking about general exercise science here, okay, and biomechanics. So absolutely you can measure this kind of thing. Absolutely this type of unique form of exercising with vibration plates has been measured. And what's unique is because the plate is moving, right, on its own independently, right, uh, versus, you know, having to create your own force, let's say if you just jumped up and down, right, versus your body interacting with existing forces um, coming through uh, a machine, through, a, through, through the plate you're standing on. That's where it starts to get unique in that it triggers a little bit of a reflex Type of reaction in your body. So when you when the body uh, gets triggered into a reflex type of response, the message from the brain. Uh, one unique thing that happens is that it's a very strong signal, and you actually activate more of your muscle spindle cells significantly more, because in general the reflex systems are mainly there for what? They're mainly there to ensure your survival. And so in those types of situations where you have to survive, uh, the body knows that it needs to utilize a lot more energy resources. Just everything needs to be way amplified in order to assure, have a greater chance of survival or to prevent injury. So that's one of the big differences here is you could do, for example, uh, some squats, you know, going up and down with some weights on the floor we can measure what the muscles normally would activate, how much they would activate. You can do the same thing on a plate, uh, a vibration plate, okay? And we can actually then see that, wow, um, not only are you just using your own force here and dealing with Earth's gravity, but the machine itself is also moving, right? And your body has to respond to that movement. And there's an actual acceleration force, an actual increase of G-force against the feet, against the body. So, as we know, exercise on the ground, you have Earth's gravity, right? One G, just Earth's gravity, one, applied that force to your mass on your body and your muscles. If you get on a plate, uh, you can actually create more, what they call microgravities, and that's why European Space Agency was investigating this form of therapy. Uh, to, in space, where there's obviously zero G, uh, to create some microgravities up there, right? So, it does the same thing on the ground, so you can have anything from zero to pretty much at the high end, uh, 20, 25 Gs of force coming off of plates out there, different brands, different machines. So it can be pretty significant, right? Uh, now normally, um, you know, if, for example, uh, if you had, with exercise science, it has very much to do with the adaptive biological response, how your body adapts to the stress of what you're doing. So if let's say you have a machine where you're experiencing 10 Gs, right? Now, of course, logic would just tell us that if your body was experiencing 10 Gs for like a minute, 
that would be pretty damaging. <laughs> and you'd black out, you know what I mean? There'd be a lot of problems physiologically. Would There'd be no positive adaptive response to that. Okay, but with machines, these vibration machines, you could, let's say, be getting that 10 G-force for, you know, one, one, like a, a hundredth of a millisecond, or just a very, very quick, very quick uh, response. So it subjects your body truly to the 20 G's force, that, that level of magnitude, but it does it for a very, very brief interval. And so that's kind of where the, the magic, if you will, or the difference in this form of exercise is. And when your body also experiences the plate move, when it stimulates the body, your body actually has a little bit of that reflex response to it. Um, and I'll give you an example. Uh, you ever walk <laughs> or run or, you know, and basically trip or slip, right? What happens, right, in that moment? You'll, you'll immediately go into a reflex response, ready to brace yourself. You immediately go into a reflex mode in that moment. Now, if you were to measure your actual muscle response there, you'd see, wow, you had a tremendous activation of uh, muscle spindle cells, but normally you can just activate those, um, you know, whenever you want, or just go to the gym and activate it to that to that level, that degree. So because you're compensated, because you kind of lost your stability and your brain very quickly registered that, and it's all modulated through your neuromuscular system, same thing's happening when you get on a vibration plate. Um, you, again, it's also triggering that same response by saying, hey, there's some sort of movement that is challenging my stability in some way. Now, you don't have to just stand on a plate, right? As you know, you can also do upper body workouts, and, but anything that is moving and challenging your body. And then a, in addition to that, remember I was talking about G-force or acceleration force. So here we have triggering the muscle spindle cells, but then what is triggering it? What is the actual force of the stimulatory action? There's now a difference in effect with that. So if we just slipped on the ground, for example, uh, you know, or if you uh, if somebody pushed you with a lot of force and you were un and you weren't expecting it, in general, what we'll see is that that extra force of push, your body's going to have to compensate and adapt and respond with a, even more activation of the muscles um, in proportion to how much force was behind that person pushing you. So it's a perfect analogy for a high G-force machine. Um, and then also with the speed increase, right? Every time the you have a cycle or a movement of that plate against the body, stimulates the body, it can be like, you know, five cycles per second or five hertz, 20 cycles per second, 35 cycles per second. Now with pivotals and vertical machines, verticals tend to go a lot higher in uh, cycles per second because the plate movement is much smaller. It's a lower amplitude, anywhere from like one to three. Some machines claim more, but it's generally like one to three. Okay, so that's vertical. It's very small. Can still up to high G force. It can with good machines, anyways. Um, but uh, with now pivotals, you have like you can have like seven to thirteen millimeters, a much larger displacement as it seesaws. Okay, so your body, every time that movement happens, let's say it was five cycles per second, your body, your, your musculature and your nervous system would meet that response with five contractions per second. Now granted, there is some upper threshold of, you know, your muscles can only twitch so fast. And so there are actually some upper ranges of very high hertz on the verticals where it's kind of you reaching that level where it's still benefiting you, but um, the, the muscles aren't able to twitch quite that fast or contract that fast. So, um, but that's kind of a, for another discussion. So now you can understand that, now let's, let's look at it very closely, um, comparing the efficiency, and you can really break out a calculator of physics, as long as you know that the specs on the machine are true, the four specs. Then you can you can absolutely make just through mathematical calculation a judgment and say okay a ten minute um, a pose if you just did a chair pose you know when you bend your knees a little bit it's going to activate more of the musculature uh, potentially burn more of the calories do this or that you can actually make these statements to a certain extent and figure it out through physics and biomechanics as long as you're gonna again you know the specs are legitimate 
because we can actually then compare that to measuring the person just doing that squat or just holding that pose on the ground where there's no movement earth's gravity we're very familiar with all that data okay so if you're contracting the muscles you can't do this in a gym keep this in mind so let's say you're just doing a a squat like this in a gym all right imagine how fast you could do a squat uh, to 13 millimeters so you're just going up and down 13 millimeters how fast could you do that per second right of course you could, you're only going to be able to do it a few cycles a second I might probably like five maybe probably even less than that and uh, somewhere around there let's just say it's five okay so what if you get on a machine now right it's doing 20 per second, right? What if it's doing 20 per second? Now, the nervous system will still respond with that. You'll still get the contractions. You'll still stimulate the same cells in the muscle. And uh, you also stimulate cells in the lymphatic system. And, yeah, the circulatory system, absolutely. Um, it all gets stimulated, of course. But just talking about the muscles now, uh, you can start to see why already it's more efficient because you're... Con because you're not only contracting the muscle more, it could take you 20 times longer, think about it, because you'd have to do 20 times as many contractions if you're just doing it on the ground, not on a machine. But that's only true if we actually are able to measure the activation of the muscle spindle cells and, and look at that data and say, hey, well, what, if, if, it, if it is 20 times more efficient, then at least the muscles have to activate to the same degree as when you're just doing them on the ground. It has to be at least at that same right measurement. So yes, we have all that data. And this is true. And in fact, it's once again even more efficient because it's not just 20 times a second on the machine. Remember that it triggers a little bit more of that reflex response. So you can actually see activations of 50 to 90% to 100% sometimes of the muscle spindle cells versus getting on the ground a fraction of that. 5, 10, 15, 20% maybe at most. It's within that range. It's a fraction of you're activating as much of the muscle uh, resources, basically, neuromuscular system, not doing it on a machine. So you combine these two things together, the frequency, and activating more of the muscles with your calculator, with a little bit of assistance, right, and formulas and biomechanics and physics, force, and all that kind of stuff, you can actually very quickly see that it is true that if you have the right kind of machine, um, there's nothing like this in terms of efficiency of a workout. In terms of conditioning the body, there, there is also nothing like it. There is no other form of exercise that activates the muscles to the same degree. Because keep in mind that what you've changed is you've changed the medium or the environment that your body's responding to. It's responding in this kind of micro artificial environment, if you will, on the machine versus just on planet Earth, let's say, right? It's just on the ground. It's just in the gym. It's completely changing. It's just like swimming. Swimming is obviously more different than most forms of ground exercises, right? Because you're you've completely changed gravity once again, right? Because you've lost ninety plus percent of your body weight, and so all those forces on your mass and your joints are different when you're swimming. Kind of so great analogy. You know, so taking land-based exercise to the next level is with a machine. Are there also now ways to incorporate machines into additional types of using other types of therapeutic equipment that are even more synergistic, um, exercise with oxygen training and um, using other types of therapy afterwards to uh, get better results? Yeah, of course. And I can definitely consult with you on that at your clinic or for yourself. Anyways, if you have any more questions about vibration machines, um, I always stick with the facts, stick to the research. And this is really the only way to navigate this very confusing category and find out what's really going to work and give you the results that you were really hoping to see for yourself or your clients. Thanks for watching.